Hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Trevor Classy from the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this week's edition of the Ladies Gaelic Football Association Research Pod webinar. Um, the title of my um, research presentation is Exploring How Exercise Can Lead to Enhanced Life Satisfaction, Work Performance and Innovation. So just a brief bio about myself. I'm a lecturer and researcher in the Department of Enterprise and Technology at the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. My research and lecturing um, looks at how various digital technologies not only impact organizations, but how it impacts um, sports athletes and sports teams. Um, I'm also an LGFA coach at a juvenile and junior level at the St. James's Ladies Football Club in Murview in Galway. I also help out with the under sevens um, on the um, juvenile um, lad side. I'm also assisted and I currently continue to assist with the LGFA County Development Squads here in Galway. Um, I've trained the under 17s, the under 15s and the under 13s um, development squads over the last couple of years. Um, I've also um, refereed or took up refereeing uh, nearly a year and a half ago. Um, and um, only recently, as last week, I have um, was accepted into the Grab Your Whistle uh, Referee Academy and the first webinar kicked off last week and it was fantastic. Um, and I suppose um, my fascination with sports um, all kicked off with my undergraduate degree, um, which I got in sports and exercise um, science in UL when I graduated all the way back in 2003. And all the learnings that I would have, you know, obtained over the four years of that course has kind of honed my interest, um, current interest, particularly with regards to um, digital technologies and other elements of um, sports science and how that it can apply um, um, across a myriad of sports, but also in um, Lady Gaelic um, football. So that's just a brief bio about myself. Um, this presentation is based on um, research which has been uh, recently published in the International Journal of Sport and Exercise Psychology. Um, it's a well-noted journal. Um, you can see the impact factor there, and it's the official journal of the International Society of Sports Psychology. The original working title of the research paper is Does Passion for Physical Activity Spill Over into Performance at Work? Examining the Direct and Indirect Effects of Passion and Life Satisfaction and organizational performance and innovativeness. And I will explain, you know, the core study background. Um, I will explain, you know, the, how we recruited the research participants. And I will also explain um, the results of the study and how that can have um, implications for ladies Gaelic football. You can see a brief abstract there. Um, if you'd like to find out further information regarding this paper, there will be a hyperlink which will be um, attached to this um, video presentation. Um, in terms of the research authors, um, um, so you have myself, Trevor Classy, um, you have Dr. Owen Whelan um, from the National University of Galway, Ireland, um, who's based in the business school. And you also have um, Kyle Paradis, who is based in the School of Sport, Faculty of Life and Health Sciences, at the Ulster um, University in Belfast. So we are the three authors um, who wrote the paper and also carried out um, the research. So I'm just going to go um, and um, provide a bit of background information to the study and the main concepts that we researched. And one of the main concepts we researched was a passion for physical activity. Now, when you read a lot of uh, interviews and um, with Lady Gaelic footballers, you'll see the word passion for the ladies um, game. You know, a passion was ignited um, at underage and that went right through to um, inter-county level. So in the research, you know, a passion has passion been conceptualized as a duality consisting of two related but conceptually different as distinct components. Um, the first is harmonious um, passion. So her kind of harmonious passion is voluntarily internalized into a person's identity. Harmonious passion reflects a level of control to engage in a physical activity only when it is compatible with other life goals 
endeavors and thus often leads to positive outcomes. Um, the great thing about harmonious passion for physical activity is that it's flexible and autonomous. So for example, the activity engagement can be stopped at any time. So for instance, a harmonially, harmoniously passionate LGFA Gaelic foot footballer would not feel compelled to go to training or to run an intense five kilometer as part of their external um, training um, if they were feeling unwell, recovering from an injury or the timing clash with an important family or working event. Um, so a harmonious, passionate athlete, you know, and they're enjoying what they're doing. They're enjoying the training. They're enjoying, you know, the uh, matches, but they won't let the games or the matches or the training come into conflict with other um, live context. Now, in contrast to this, you have this kind of obsessive passion, and this reflects a lack of self-control um, towards engaging in the physical activity. The same athlete, you know, or the same LGF athlete would display an obsessive passion if they were consumed by a sense of having to persist, let's say, going to training or doing that five kilometer run, uh, no, matter, no matter what else might be going on in their life. So for example, they might be feeling ill, recovering from injury, or a family or work event. Um, and this, oft, this often leads to negative outcomes such as creating conflict with other aspects of one life. Um, although the obsessively passionate um, athlete still loves the activity, they feel bound to it, compelled to it, controlled by it, and compelled to engage in the activity even when not appropriate to do so, as it goes beyond their self-control. So these are two kind of components that we looked at. So um, what we looked at in terms of the impact of the passion for physical activity, we looked at the impact on the workplace. And two distinct elements we looked at, we looked at work performance and work innovativeness, which are two distinct elements in the workplace. So when you look at work performance, you know, it's defined as the process of carrying out or accomplishing an action, task or function. So it's your day to day routines that you perform in the workplace and how well you do them. Now, work innovativeness was another one we looked at, and this is defined as the extent to which an individual actively generates, discovers, and promotes creative work-related ideas. Although it's related to job performance, it is a distinct construct. For example, you know, a software programmer may perform very highly by producing code that is technically flawless, but, in, but whose innovativeness would be considered low as the code lacks novelty and originality. So it's the ability to create, to think creatively and adapt your work um, processes on a day-to-day -day basis. So these were the two distinct elements that we looked at in the workplace. Okay, so this is the kind of research model that um, we created um, from the literature and we identified a gap which um, looked at, you know, how the passion, your passion for physical activity in terms of that harmonious and obsessive passion impacted your workplace in terms of work performance and work innovativeness. But if you see here um, at the bottom, we also used a moderating factor in terms of um, the indirect effect of life satisfaction. And this was interesting because life satisfaction in the context of the present study it, it, it is defined as an overall assessment of feelings and attitudes about one's life at a particular point in time ranging from positive to uh, negative. And according to the OCED, um, a recent study that Irish people um, on average have a high level of life satisfaction. Um, and the hypothesis we included here was that workers with a, that athletes with a harmonious passion for physical activity will be more likely to perceive higher levels of life satisfaction which in turn would be associated with enhanced work performance and innovativeness. Additionally, we kind of hypothesized that it was expected that those with an, an obsessive, obsessive passion for physical activity would be more likely to report lower life satisfaction and in turn would be um, lower performance in work performance measures in terms of work performance and work innovativeness. In terms of the research method, um, so in order to kind of test our research model, we needed to pick a sport um, at an amateur level, which we felt would um, 
kind of really provide cogent insights in terms of uh, hypothesis. So we chose cycling and we chose a cohort of 272 amateur cyclists. Now cycling was selected as a form of physical activity due to its popularity, which has increased dramatically among Irish and UK workers, largely due to a government tax-free incentive scheme to purchase bikes. And it's interesting um, with the latest figures from cyclingireland.ie that show that an estimated 500,000 people within the Republic of Ireland are now enjoying cycling as a form of exercise, participating at least once a week. So this 510,000 figure, you know, it marks an increase of approximately 260,000 people um, compared to the same time last year in 2019. And you know, the impact of COVID and lockdowns has an impact, has had an impact in the way people are now going uh, from one destination to another and um, cycling is one of those um, forms of physical activity which has seen a large increase. Um, so we used a survey um, to um, assess our research model which had a cross-sectional quantitative design. Um, the participants were recruited from a popular cycling forum and the participants um, cycled a minimum of two hours per week and an average of seven hours per week. So that's just a little bit of detail about the research method. In terms of the results and implications um, of our study, we had a number of interesting results. So the first is that engagement in physical activity will benefit work performance and work innovativeness. But there's a caveat, only when an athlete holds a harmonious passion for the physical activity. Consequently, this study ch challenges existing you know, occupational health psychology studies which conceptualize and suggest that all physical activity benefits um, workplace performance. Um, if you think about it, you know, a harmonious passion can, for physical activity can bestow energy, vigor, enthusiasm, which spill over into the workplace. Workers are often advised that regular physical activity will help them to cope with organizational demands while also providing the vigor and vitality needed to excel in one's career. The findings from this study align with recent research which demonstrated that it's the type of passion that one holds for a physical activity that matters, not the mere engagement. To extract the positive benefits of physical activity for work outcomes and general life, Athletes need to ensure that their passion is at least moderately harmonious and low in terms of obsession. In terms of our second finding, we found that, you know, harmonious passion for a physical activity led to increases in life satisfaction. And this can explain why a harmonious passion for physical activity is positively associated with work performance and work innovativeness. This idea of the, the harmonious passion for activity, physical activity is more likely to benefit work performances when it also enhances the athlete's satisfaction with life. So that's an important um, note there. And finally, 45% of the current sample um, that we um, researched reported at least a moderate obsessive passion for physical activity. This suggests that education on passion for physical activities and specifically the differences between harmonious and obsessive forms should also be incorporated into players and coaching and training manuals to enhance awareness. I think this is an important part because our study suggested that those with this moderate obsessive passion for physical activity, you know, it can lead to detrimental workplace impacts in terms of performance and innovators at work and this is a core um, finding that we feel that should be enhanced to player and coaching awareness. So there are the results um, of our study. I've briefly gone over the implications. While the study was conducted, um, we retested our research model with cyclists. We hope to test it amongst other amateur athletes. And um, we have plans in, um, in the next, in 2021, to kind of operationalize, operationalize this research model among um, ladies Gaelic footballers. And that concludes uh, my presentation for the webinar today. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions relating to the research, uh, please do get in touch. You can email me at trevor.classy at gmit.ie. I'm also on Twitter at trowerc. 
Further details regarding the research are also included in um, the details below this webinar. Thank you very much.